episode of Blog Talk TV, the social media inspired talk show where we focus on some of the country's biggest bloggers. That's right. We show the impact they've been able to make on their community and offer some how-to tips to help jumpstart your own blogging career. And I'm your host, Bess Hour from gottogetblogging.com. And I'm Ben from orlandowaterhole.com. And on today's show, we have Liz Thompson, who is from iheartvegetables.com. And she's head of the Virginia Bloggers Network. And yeah. she's going to talk to us about the value of meeting in person as well as how blogging helped her uh, as she was making a big change in her uh, uh, eating lifestyle. Yeah, and she's she's formed a really great community there in Virginia. So I'm excited to have her on. Yeah. So Bess, what have you been working on lately? What's... So Ben, you know, you're my personal hero. I come without a cape. Oh, there we go. So you have inspired me. Wait, what? Don't laugh. He is. I've been very inspired. Just little old me. Uh, podcasting. You've uh-huh. had such success with your podcasting that it has inspired me. It's actually my push for this year. And so I have embraced it. And I've actually started a podcast called Blogger Tales. Yes, with Chef Dennis. With Chef Dennis. He was my first one. He's actually my only one at this time. (laughs) I didn't realize how long this was going to take. My inspiration only goes so far. (laughs) So I got an opportunity. If you're not familiar with Chef Dennis, he is Ask Chef Dennis online. Has over half a million followers on Google+. And I was fascinated with, because Google+, has been perplexing not only to myself, but lots of bloggers. We're not really sure with what to do with it. So I got to sit down with Dennis and talk to him not only about how he got started in blogging, and and let's face it, he's a 61-year-old blogger. And not that not that the golden years aren't wonderful, but that was kind of late in life to start Hmm. a career change. And he has not only done it gracefully and wonderfully, but dynamically and has grown into one of the biggest names. So uh, if you want to take a listen, you can check it out on gottogetblogging.com. Just coast on over to the, uh, to the I believe it's, we have it listed under events, and you can see there we listed it that way. It was public so everybody could hear it. So we'll also, we'll tweet a link out for it. How about you? What have you been doing? Uh, I think I've spent a lot of time with some one-on-one uh, conversations with bloggers, which has been a lot of fun. So uh, the tutorial about uh, setting goals that we talked about in an earlier show, I think it resonated with a lot of people. So I've had some conversations with uh, Real Iron Dad, who we're going to see uh, shortly. Yeah. Um, talked about that. Um, Robin Draper, who writes Authentic Florida, she had some questions about it, so we've been chatting a bit there. So I think there's value in just always reaching out to bloggers and asking questions and, and doing, you can't meet up in person. Person, uh, meeting up virtually and talking, uh, whether it's on Skype or by, via email. Fantastic. Speaking of Real Iron Dad, he has some tips for you if you've ever wanted to go highlight your favorite store, whether it's a grocery store or a store that sells sports equipment, whatever your niche is. If you've ever wanted to feature a store, he has some guidance on how to get permission to be able to take your cameras in there. So let's Excellent. take a look. Hey there, fellow bloggers. Real Iron Dad here with two questions for you. One. Have you ever wanted to promote your favorite brands and products on location at your favorite store or business? Two, have you cleared it through the proper channels? Well, before you head into any corporate business, make sure to take three steps to ensure your success. First, find the right contact from the marketing department. If there isn't one on site, ask for the person you're talking to's contact information or for the manager on duty. Two. Be ready to tell your story in a few short sentences. Tell them how great your blog is and how you would like to let the world know about how great you think their product or store is. Maybe you have a media kit ready. Finally, fill out all the appropriate paperwork with the store to ensure that you have the green light to shoot what you'd like. The more prepared you are, the more polished and professional you'll look. And everyone loves that. Blog Talk TV is produced by gottagetblogging.com, an online community featuring how-to video tutorials on everything from monetization, working with brands, the basics of setting up your first blog, and more. Visit gottagetblogging.com to sign up for a free or pro membership today. Thompson of iHeartVegetables.com, and she's the head of the Virginia Bloggers Network. Liz, we are so happy to have you here virtually. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Liz, let's start at the beginning. Tell us about your blog, iHeartVegetables. 
So I started blogging back in 2010 because I wanted to go vegan. I decided to go vegan for six months and just kind of see what would happen. And so I wanted a place to keep track of recipes and ideas and the things that I liked and didn't like. Um, and so I blogged as a vegan for six months and then decided that I did not want to be vegan, but I wanted to keep blogging. Um, so I'm still a vegetarian, but now I'm eating dairy and all that stuff. And so the vegan thing didn't stick, but I found that I really liked blogging and I really liked the, blog, the blogging community. What, what was it about blogging at the very beginning that you found valuable? It's like, why, why would you go vegan and, and vegetarian and then do a blog at the same time? It was funny because I had just moved to Virginia. So I'm from Ohio and I moved to Virginia. So I was in a new place and I didn't really know anyone. And I thought this could kind of be an interesting thing to kind of chronicle this, this new chapter in my life. And um, it actually turned out to be a really good way to meet people. And so it kind of gave me um, an excuse to explore the city. I wanted to try new restaurants and new dishes and meet new people and things like that. So it sort of became this vehicle for this other hobby of just trying new things and meeting new people. So Liz, even though um, I guess you can see we're in my kitchen, I don't <laughs> it's kind of an ongoing joke. I don't actually cook, so I'm always fascinated. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm always fascinated though with, with food bloggers and your endless creativity and recipes. How do you how do you come up with something fresh all the time? It's kind of funny because I didn't really cook that much either before I started a blog, but really? once I went vegan yeah. There wasn't really a whole lot that I could just buy off the shelf as a vegan. So I kind of thought, okay, I'm going to have to learn how to cook. And so uh, all of my recipes are still very simple. Like I, I don't like making really complicated things. Um, and I want people to see that you can make an easy, healthy, delicious dinner with just a few ingredients and nothing complicated. Um, so most of what I make is actually pretty easy to cook. Um, but I guess I sort of started learning to cook out of necessity just because there aren't a lot of vegan options out there. How, how do you balance, I guess, the writing with the, with the recipe creation? Where do you get the, the ideas of things to talk about? Where does your content come from? I guess writing itself has always, I've always enjoyed writing um, and I like people. So I guess in some ways I just think of it as talking. To, um, I, get, I try to write like I'm just talking to my friends or my husband or something like that. Um, but usually there's some kind of story or something that goes along with the recipe, either because there was a disaster in the kitchen or there was a reason for why I was cooking this thing. So there's usually some kind of tidbit that's like in my head as I'm cooking. <laughs> So do you have a favorite recipe that you, is your go-to that you can share with us? Oh man, it's so hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> it would depend on what it is, um, but there's a chana masala recipe that I love. Anytime people come to visit, I love making that. Um, there's also a lentil shepherd's pie that I made for my family when they came to visit over Christmas. And I even got my meat loving dad to enjoy it. So I consider that a win. <laughs> there you go. We'll have to tweet those recipes out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Liz, if you'll tweet a couple of those recipes, the ones that you like best out, we'll retweet them for everybody. Sure right. thing. Yeah. So one of the things that you do with your blog is you post your content, I think right. it's uh, automatically to Tumblr, which I thought was unique because I, I, I haven't played a lot with Tumblr. And I don't know a lot of bloggers who use that as a second platform. So I'm just curious if you could talk a bit about um, you know why you why you do that and what the benefit is or what you or what the experimentation is all about. And actually, to be clear, you have a regular blog, and then this is automatically posted to Tumblr, which was an unusual strategy. So I actually got into Tumblr because there's a Tumblr office here in Richmond, and so they occasionally do meetups and events and things like that um, for people with Tumblrs, and so that kind of sparked my interest. Like, oh, I don't really know much about Tumblr. Like, I wonder what that's all about. So. I kind of played around in the platform and I saw, wow, there's this whole community of bloggers that are really only on the Tumblr platform. And so it seemed like a market that I could tap into just by automating my posts into Tumblr. So everything feeds into there automatically and I can add tags for different categories and things like that. Um, there's a lot of vegetarian Tumblr blogs and things. Um, so it's sort of a way to connect to this other segment of people that might want to only follow blogs on Tumblr because it's sort of its own RSS feed type platform. Um, and so there's a plugin for WordPress where you can literally just automatically publish your post to Tumblr. Um, and it's been kind of just an easy way to reach people that you might not otherwise reach. I want to try that now. I know. Because you I, kind of have me fascinated. Because it, I'm thinking like, <laughs> because I wonder if there are people interested in what I write about that was, would find me like on a Tumblr search or something like a keyword or right. something like along those lines. So, 
Liz, do you find a, a difference in the, the people that follow you on Tumblr than the people that might read your blog otherwise? Like, is there an age group difference or anything that you can tell? I think Tumblr can sometimes attract a bit of a younger audience. Um, so I think I'm probably reaching people there that might be a different demographic than what I would typically find on my blog. Um, but overall, I think just the vegetarian community in general, there's a lot of people that are active on Tumblr. And so that's kind of been a good channel. Cool. So one of the things that we want to talk about, because this was really exciting, is that you are part of the Virginia Bloggers Network. And so tell us, what, what is that all about? So it, it came to be because I had a friend um, who was blogging in Charlottesville at the time. She's since moved to Alabama. Um, but she had a blog and she found mine and we were talking online and we're like, you know, I bet there's a lot of other bloggers in the area that would like to meet up for lunch. So we're like, let's try it. Let's just invite some of the people that we knew um, through Twitter and things like that. And so we had a little lunch um, in Charlottesville um, probably three years ago or something like that. And we were all having lunch, and as we're eating lunch, there were probably 10 of us. This girl's at a table next to us, and she's like, hi, like, I, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I have a photography blog. Can I join you? And we're like, yes, <laughs> this is the purpose. Um, and so we were like, oh, my gosh, there's totally a need for this, but how can we make it easy for people to find each other? Because that was the hardest part. Like, unless it was a friend of a friend, it was just hard to find, like, who, who to invite, who would want to come. So um, I thought, well, I know how to build a blog. So I just made a WordPress site and called it virginiabloggers.com. And it was crazy because we just started organically getting people submitting their blog. And we've had over 500 people um, submit their blog and say, I want to be a part of this thing. And um, so now we have meetups all over the state of Virginia and D.C. and Hampton Roads and Richmond. Um, and it's just been amazing seeing bloggers connecting with each other and being like, oh, it was so great to meet you at the meetup. Like, you were so inspiring. Now I'm trying this new thing that I didn't know about before. And so it's been cool to kind of see the culture evolve. So we, uh, we know that there's a, a huge blogger group down in Florida, and there's obviously a huge one, 500 members in Virginia. So if, if you don't live in one of those two states and you're not sure if there is a blogger group in your area, do you have any tips of how a blogger could go about trying to connect with some local and maybe get a local group going? I would say the best thing to do is search for whatever the hashtag is for your city on Twitter. So I started, Richmond uses RVA, so I started searching the RVA hashtag to find who are the people that are really active on Twitter. Um, and then I found their blogs from their Twitter profile. And so it was literally just a matter of tweeting at them being like, hey, would you want to come to brunch at this restaurant? Um, and it was amazing when you think about the fact that you have all these strangers who don't know each other and they don't all necessarily blog on the same thing but you have this common interest um and so just finding people in the area and reaching out and being like hey we're doing this thing do you want to come has kind of been the easiest way to get it going so if someone wants to find the virginia bloggers group where can they find you so we're on virginiabloggers.com um we're also on facebook at virginia bloggers um our twitter and instagram is va is for bloggers. But those are probably the best ways to connect and you can subscribe to email updates and everything through the platform so you can get notified of events and things like that. Oh, very cool. Well, we've got to take a quick break, Liz, so we'll be back. But real quickly, we're going to go see what Professor Josh has going on in the Bloggers Lab. Hi, Professor Josh again. I have another great app for you. So if you're like me, you love putting photos online, so Instagram, Twitter, all those different places, but sometimes you wanna add a cool font or artwork to it. What you might wanna do is go ahead and get Over. Over is a great one because they have some great styles. So once you load your photo right from your phone on here, you're able to go in and I'm able to add it either uh, add text or artwork. So if I add text, I double tap, I type it in really quick. Um, I choose what color I want and then I can stretch out and choose sizes. So once I get everything in, I go ahead and do it and I can stretch out um, how big I want the font or how small I want it and then be able to go ahead and change it. I can go back into it and edit other information. 
um, and easily be able to change the color, be able to change it if it's opaque, or add more into it. Um, so it's really great. It's a really affordable app, and it has in-app purchases. They have different things available, different font packs or different artwork packs, maybe for the holidays, and all those are really simple to be able to download and keep on your iOS device. So I definitely recommend this. Um, again, my name is Professor Josh, and check out more tips and tricks at ProfessorJosh.com. We're back with Liz Thompson from I Heart Vegetables and head of the Virginia Bloggers Network. Uh, so Liz, tell us, what are some of the benefits of engaging in a blogging community? You've talked about the meetups in person. What, 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 why would a blogger want to do that? I think it's a really good way to sort of expand your network and get to know people who are in a different blogging niche. Um, so I like to follow fashion blogs and lifestyle blogs and things to kind of just get the creative juices flowing and think of some different topics and ideas and um, it's just kind of inspiring being around people that are sort of in a different industry. And do you have any must read Virginia blogs? I'm sure there's a lot. You don't want to leave anybody out. But who, who are some that, <laughs> you, that you go to on a regular um, basis? A food blogger that I love in Richmond is called broadappetite.com. Her photography is amazing and she's got super creative dishes. All right. And uh, I want to know, you know, we've talked a lot about what, what you've done. What's the coolest experience you've ever had because of blogging? My husband and I actually got to go to Colonial Williamsburg for a wine, beer, and cheese tasting weekend, um, all just to cover on the blog. So we got to meet a cheesemonger from Wisconsin, and we got to meet um, the head brewer at Heavy Seas Brewing and actually taste the hops of the beers and um, all of these interesting kind of foodie things. So that was probably one of the most, one of the most fun perks of being a blogger. Okay, I'm not a food blogger, but if they ever want a non-food blogger to come drink wine, <laughs> I'm there. Endless wine, endless <laughs> cheese. Throw in some chocolate awesome. and we're good. And we're good. Um, what, 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 think about now, you've, you've come so far. What, what advice would you give an early beginning blogger? The best advice would just be keep at it. It takes a long time um, to kind of get your name out there and for people to find you. And so it's easy to sort of get discouraged and see someone else's blog and say, why am I not getting all the comments or all the traffic? But it just takes time. Um, it takes time and a lot of hard work. <laughs> Liz, as we wrap up, where can we find you online? iHeartVegetables.com and I'm on um, Twitter and Instagram at iHeartVeggies. Well, thank you so much for taking time to join us via Skype. You know, next time we're going to have to get you in the studio. So we appreciate you taking time to be here. Sounds good. See ya. Take care. We love closing the show with show and tell. <laughs> Liz, she, she left before we had time. Before we had jazz hands. Liz, I know you would have done jazz hands. We would have done jazz hands. So show and tell is our moment where we love to share uh, a favorite app, a gadget, uh, a blog post, anything that's really cool. So if you've got a suggestion uh, that you want us to check out, email us to info at um, flblogcon. No, <laughs> gotta get blogging.com. <laughs> I love it when Ben messes up. He never messes up. I'm always the one, yeah. Info at gottagetblogging.com. Info at gottagetblogging.com. So anyway, Bess, what do you have for us today? So mine is what you all just witnessed. So Skype. So if you're not familiar, and I actually do have, you know, we think in this techie day and age that bloggers know everything. I've had a lot of bloggers that actually kind of shy away from Skype because they're not really sure how it works. Skype is not anything to be afraid of. It's a free tool that you can really take advantage of and utilize. So you saw us just do a video conference over there and we actually recorded that with QuickTime. So QuickTime is great to not only play movies on, but you can also record using QuickTime. You go up to file, QuickTime, you can do new movie recording or file QuickTime new audio recording because you use Skype for your podcast. Mm -hmm. How do you use that? So I actually have a separate software called Call Recorder that I use and it records uh, the, mo the video of Skype and then I just convert it to an audio. It, 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 the software comes with that conversion already. Right. So. Well, in this day and age, you know, especially getting as many people involved with your blog as possible, but you don't have to be located with them physically. You can go across the country to do some interviews. So check out Skype. Yeah. What do you have? So uh, I've got, I'm calling it an Instagram hack. An Instagram Ooh, hack. You sound so. It sounds so bad. very, very bad. Very bad, bad. boy of Instagram, I'm right edgy. here. Edgy. We're edgy on the show. Uh, so one of the things that I've I've always been frustrated with is when you type in Instagram, you can't type 
paragraphs or put line breaks in between、right. your sentence. It just flows all the way through, and so it's、oh, if you've got、yeah. like a fun message you want to share, it's tough for people to read.、Um, so I don't know if you remember Nick Cicero. Yes,、um, but he he showed this、uh, on Instagram, and then I was like, oh, I want to copy it. And so essentially, if you if you have a message that you want to put on Instagram with your、mm-hmm. picture, what you do is go into Notepad first. And this I've only tested this on the iPhone, so I'm presuming. And, and Notepad's one of those free apps. Yeah, it's on the your... free app that comes with it that you can just type in notes.、Mm-hmm. And so you can you type in your notes, right? And you put your breaks in between, so you can see I have a little sentence, and、mm-hmm. then I've got the hashtags at the bottom, so it's not all cluttered. Then you just、um, select it all,、mm-hmm. copy, and paste it into Instagram. And when you paste it into the Instagram app, it pastes all of those breaks. So the, then the trick is don't touch it at that point. It's, <laughs> once it's pasted, leave it. leave it. Click next, and you can post your photo. So as people are scrolling through, they can just see that things are nice, neat, and clean, and you can capture people's eye with those different things. So, Bess, where can we find you online? You can find me at Bess underscore Hour on Twitter, or I'm always. At gottagetblogging.com, and you can find me online at orlandowaterhole.com. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, and of course, on my favorite Instagram. Yeah, and again, thanks to Liz Thompson for joining us today virtually, and we'll see you guys next time. So wait, there was another one. Schedule gram. Schedule gram, and then there's another one, and they were talking about the terms of service. So schedule schedule gram. <laughs> <laughs>